In the following series I will be showing you how to build this monstrosity, which is the Jewel 5 Mission Craft. And yes, we will be doing that in the next five episodes. This one will be focused on building, the next one on launching and further out. But let's get into it. So the first things first, I want to be able to do some research. While it's not technically exactly related, I wanted to research some more advanced probes. Now, that being said, let's go and let's design the space plane part. So first we're going to start with Mark II cockpit, and uh, which is the inline cockpit. And the main reason for that is because I wanted to have a docking port in front, which will be featuring that massive heat shield that you have seen in the intro. So and also I want to have it to have a docking port because it will be docking to the space station for refuelings and whatnot. So that thing being said, we have the we need a cargo bay, and in the cargo bay we will have the reaction controls and all the wonderful batteries, experiments, RTGs and whatnot. So everything electrical that you might want to have and use and love and whatnot. Of course we want to have some batteries as well, then we want the materials bay for conducting all important material science. Two pieces please of the uh, monopropellant tanks and the mystery goo some thermometer and of course all the other scientific equipment that you would normally put on any respectable space plane within the Kerbal Space Program. And then we shall be putting... Uh, uh, closing the cargo bay I think. Maybe antenna for a sen some sending of the um, data but not here exactly. This wouldn't fit. No, no. Okay, let's put some more batteries rather. Those could could be mighty useful. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place them down there. There you go, okay. And then I'm gonna be closing the cargo bay. Good, I'm happy with that. Okay, so now let we need a body. And I will want to use a rocket body because I will be using rapiers. And those actually drank a lot of fluids. So, yeah. That being said, let's just dump them in and let's put the docking port also at the back because this craft has to have the docking ports on the front and back. The main reason being is because it will be in line with the rest of the lander. So yeah, and it will be launched in a, as a single launch. Did I forget to say that all this entire vessel will be a single launch vehicle? Yeah, probably I did. Never mind, let's continue. Some shock cone intakes. Let's see, what do we have? I need some good wings. Oh, this would fit nicely. Some advanced canards. Oh yeah, I love the design. This would look perfect. Okay, surfaces. And one thing that you have to consider here, it has to be wide enough to generate enough lift on a uh, lathe, while it still needs to be small enough that it can fit beneath the 10 meter fairing. So. And I don't want to go into the shenanigans of the foldable wing structures and whatnot because, well, that's not my shtick. So, yeah. All in all, let's just see how it looks empty mass because, as you have seen in my previous SSTO mess ups, my SSTOs do tend to be flip happy. So, I figured I might want to make a, an SSTO that's even when drained, it's pretty stable. And this one seems to be the case. Seems to be because I haven't tested it yet, which is the next step, of course. I will build this craft and I will test it and then I will integrate it into the huge single, well, not single stage, a, a rocket that will be launching this bad boy with some more. So, okay, just a few more stabilizers and make sure that everything is up to snuff. Uh, this is what I call my auxiliary landing system. So my primary landing system is of course wings and you know landing gear, but the parachutes have proven useful on many occasions, so yeah, I want to use them just on a safe side. Radial symmetry and let's put in then these reaction control thrusters. Uh, they are really important when docking and undocking, so I figured might as well use them. There we go. Two rapier engines and all right, let's see. <clears throat> so we have a total of 8.6 thousand delta V, which is more than enough to get us pretty much anywhere. Uh, and then we need to just make sure that we set the action groups and of course parallax mod. Love it. Okay, hit the engines and let's go. 
So this is just a test flight where I plan to do a rough circle around the KSE, so we see how it performs, how it flies, etc. So, all in all it looks pretty responsive. Look at it go. Yeah, I'm doing a low level flight for you guys to be able to enjoy the parallax view. You know, see how many trees? I think it's just amazing. yoo -hoo! There we go, look at it go. Okay, those rapiers are really, you know, pushing it. Although I must say, they are chugging through these, um, they're chugging through the gasoline like there's no tomorrow. Look at them go. Alright, I think that my Delta V is a little bit wrong on this current stage. I'm not, I'm pretty sure that mine is a little bit, you know, overstating it. I believe the Delta V from the Kerbal Engineer, that one seems to be way more accurate. Yeah. Alright rotling down the rapiers a little bit and let's see if we can land on the runway jab and bell you are my test pilots and this was of course our simulation so okay shutting down the engines retesting uh, of activation good seems to be working fine okay let's pre prepare landing gear down air brakes yes Reducing that velocity, there we go, okay, get ready for the landing, there's the ground, looks hard, okay, 97, and yeah, oh, 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 well, any landing that you can walk away from, yeah, you got the point, okay, <clears throat> so the aircraft, uh, the engineers have deemed the, the craft to be a great success, and apparently it has been okayed for sending it to the lathe. So, now we're just gonna retoggle it and making sure that we are actually putting it as a sub-assembly. Space plane, SSTO, atmospheric. Space plane, yeah. There we go, look at it. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? I think it will fly just nicely. All right. Now, there we go, and now we need to just test it on lathe. It has uh, the same thrust weight and same delta, delta V. Okay, we save the plane and let's continue. So, now we're gonna go into the VAB and we're gonna be building a probe uh, with some... Oh, this is a big one. Oh, I didn't know the hex 2 was actually 1.75, okay. So let's, I, I, first of all, I want to build the small satellites and those small probes will be the ones landing on Joule 5. So all, you know, five, five moons of Joule. So I'm designing a probes that will be landing there. So the small landers that you have not seen in the intro because you have seen just a big craft. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so two engines, then two, two small Oscar B tanks, then we have a small engine, two batteries, uh, reaction wheels and a probe core. Yeah. Okay, so now we need some sort of communications device. Uh, landing legs, yes. Those look good enough. There we go, beautiful. And then I need some, what do I need? I need a f experiments, obviously, and I need a communications device. So uh, first let's see, power generation wise, it will be around joules, so we want to use RTGs more than solar panels. Then we need a communications array that will be able to actually transmit. So I'm gonna dump it here, there we go. <clears throat> we want to have some lights, because you know, Aziz lights. There we go, and we want to have some scientific equipment, right? So, speaking of that, where's my scientific equipment? Seismometer, yes. Gravioli, yes please. Magnetometer, uh, you know, pressure sensor, temperature sensor, magnetometer, ma boom. All right, good, 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 good. And a mystery goo, I could cram a mystery goo in there as well. There we go, on opposite sides to keep things all nice, tight and balanced. All right, great. That looks good to me. So that's the la the science microlander, and I'm gonna actually add a deorbit stage below that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna be placing the 
what can we place below? Um, I think the decoupler, obviously, and then a bigger tank, thank you. And then I think, oh, in the vacuum, it won't give me a lot of Delta V 996. That's not a lot. So what I'm gonna be putting, I'm gonna put bigger tank and then this small engine. Uh, well, I could put then the Terrier as well, or yeah. It's no great reduction on Delta V. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, let's reroute it and let's save it. Joule Micro Lander. Good, so this is the second sub-assembly and now I need the third sub-assembly. The third one is gonna be the Science Grabber. So this will be a craft that will be hooking up to these landers and it will be picking up the science from them. And that one has to have a huge amount of Delta V and it has to have uh, <clears throat> uh, the science capsule, of course, and this should basically go there, grab the science and hopefully be able to return it. See, something like that. All right, and uh, what I'm actually trying to remember is what is exactly the requirement for, you know, the craft to be able to respond. So I'm gonna take this uh, antenna here, and this one should be enough to talk to the parent craft. So I just have to remember, okay, this is 580 meters per second. That's not good enough. 1249, that sounds plausible. 1270. Yeah, that's good, I guess. I think it would be good with the ion engine, but it would be too slow. So, Microscience Grabber, I'm going to use this as a version 1. I think it's going to be just fine. So, <clears throat> there we go. Science Microscience Grabber. Save, save it and let's do it. So, okay, so now it's time to design the main thing. I'm going to take the big probe core. And I need the lander can, uh, and I of course need this guy. So I'm gonna put these two, these three together, just to be on the safe side. Because according to the Comnet tutorials, and now guys, correct me if I'm wrong here in the, it says that if I have a big uh, remote control probe, I need two pilots uh, to be present. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stuck the two pilots in the Mark II lander can, and hopefully they will be able to, you know, do things. So now let's just equip this uh, mini transfer vehicle. So batteries, I could put batteries, RTGs. RTGs I'm gonna place, of course, but I need the batteries. Uh, okay, I could actually use this for some more science experiments. Yeah, that looks good because I have two big batteries already. Fair enough. So what are we gonna put here? We're gonna put here the EVA and the repair kits. So basically the science kits and the repair kits. Just in case we need to repair something, this will be mighty useful. All right, good. Of course, a spare chute and a spare jetpack. It's always handy to have those. All right, and I think this is gonna be the Jewel exploration ship. Yeah, that's a little bit smaller than expected. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. It has a lot more that needs to be built, so yeah, we're gonna do that. All right. So, speaking of that, let's see if we, we have a docking port on top. We have to have the re-entry shield, because I'm hoping that this would eventually be coming back, or maybe it won't. I don't know, do we need a re-entry shield? Maybe we don't. Yeah, we could use just one of the grabbers later on or just return it back to Kerbin and let it do its shtick. Okay. So this the plan is that this thing should be coming back to Kerbin eventually, at some point. So now I'm going to be placing these two. Good. And I'm going to place these two tanks. Look at that. That makes sense. It still has to fit within the 10 meter fairing, remember? Then I'm going to be placing things like this. Okay, maybe the quad couplers are a little bit of an overkill. Maybe I need tricouplers. Where's the tricoupler? Let's see. Uh, tricoupler. Yeah, I could angle it like that. Yeah, that could work. 
Okay, good. Yeah, I need a fairing and uh, because I want to be placing these guys in the fairings themselves. All right, fair enough. So if we place like these, then we take two of these, please. And then we take another. No, no, not you. I need the exploration probe. Where are you? You're here. Okay, that those two. See, there we go. Much better. And I want to now be, be building the, you know, the fairings for it. Okay, let's place you. Ooh, oh, this is gonna bite me in the rear, isn't it? So if I place them too big, they won't fit. If I place them too small, I think I need to space them out a little bit more. Okay, let's offset this by a little. You can offset by this much. Okay, so it still looks plausible. Okay, good. Now, can you build me a fairing section, please? Terminal cross section. Oh, this is gonna be a little bit one of those th times. Okay, come on. Okay, no, that's the maximum. So if I place them up, then I can build a fairing and I can just put it down. I think that would work. Okay, build a clamshell fairing. Yeah, no. It has to be a tight fit. Good, 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 good. That works. Okay. <clears throat> Seems like it, uh, it's, it's doing okay, and uh, now I need some SAS unit. I need the fuel flow, which will be flowing actually outwards of that main tank. And now we're placing the heavy part, the Nervous. Eight of them to be exact. Yeah, what can I tell you? It's a hefty ship. All right, so those things being placed, we have to make sure that they're in correct stage. Once they fire up, they will be churning through 1.5 thousand of delta V, but uh, with a thrust to weight of 0 0.8. And they need to push this plus the space plane, so don't forget a space plane as well. That still has to come on top. There we go. Okay, that's good enough, I would say. So now, let's auto strut stuff. And now we have to f squeeze in the space plane here. So actually, let's do, where's my, there we go, stack separator, and now the space plane. Look at this, it fits like a glove. I just wouldn't want to be here when the fairing deploys. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> now we have to put this. Look, when it opens, it looks marvelous, amazing. So, okay, that thing is settled, and now we have to build a big ass rocket that will bring this thing into space. Or it, was, it will bring this abomination into space, more to say. So, actually, and this we could use a five meter tank. There we go. I'm actually thinking that I might need a transfer stage rather. So maybe here I want to go with three and a half meet three seven five meter tank. And then I want to use yes, this engine. This is this is much better. Rhino. Looks amazing. This looks like a plausible transfer stage. And then we put this one, and then we put the Mastodon engines. Yeah. That's gonna be a good one. All right, so we do that. Sure. Place the engines, one in the middle. That gives us, a, what, 1.2 thrust to weight? Ooh. That's like Saturn V. Actually, even worse than a Saturn V. Not that I'm going for that aesthetic or something, but actually we need something with more kick. So what I'm going to do, I'm telling you what. I'm going to be placing this guy... Okay, that's 105, good. And then I'm going to be placing some boosters. There we go, with four boosters. Yes, that looks amazing. Okay, place it like that. Fine. 
that's the four boosters that's gonna get us up and then I need to of course make sure that I have everything auto strutted so that gives us a total of 6,000 and 296 Delta V I mean, I mean these tail fins are just but ugly I don't want them I'm gonna find something else where are my winglets winglets not you you obviously all right so a lot of fins will go there okay center of mass center of lift come on work with me here how are we doing still way too up okay well there technically you don't need to do that if your thrust authority is high enough so you can control the rocket but i like to do this because this would make my craft aerodynamically stable and that's really important with this big ass rocket so okay launch clamps good yeah, by the way guys, don't forget to smash that like button and I think this is, thing is ready for launch, but we'll be launching in the next episode. Stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching.